I need you to listen to me. A truck hit your car. What? You're dead, Michael. No, I can't be dead. I, I, I got stuff to do. Unfortunately, you died single. So? Souls cross over in pairs. Angelo! Michael! You have to find a soulmate. You're dead! Yeah. You look great! This is fantastic! I'm so glad you did! So I just ask dead girls on dates? Sure, why not? How do I find someone if I don't see anybody most of the time? Come on, don't be dumb. Just squint really hard and you see whoever you want. Sorry. I met this girl. I really feel like she's the one, you know? She's she's everything. Are you worried a new dead guy will show up and sweep me off my feet? Yeah, a little. That looks flimsy. I don't even know why we haven't been whisked up into the sky or whatever happens. For some reason, you don't match the criteria. Yeah, we're not soulmates. Sorry. What, do you think even the universe thinks you're too good for me? Hey, watch it. Well, because I'm alive and you're dead. So what exactly happens if I don't find a soulmate? You cease to exist, and the world goes on without you, as always. How much time do we have? It's like life. Nobody knows, and everybody gets a different amount. Oh! I mean, why can you hear me? Why can you see me? Why do you understand this? I've just been seeing this stuff a lot lately. Normally, it's not possible to bond with someone who's on the other side of the line, but she's close. What does that mean? It means she's going to die soon. So I have to let something terrible happen so I can hope that it means we work out for each other? I mean, she still has her whole life. I can't let her die. This isn't going to work out for you the way you want it to. You can't change destiny. Michael, this is my friend Faith. And Faith, this is my newly deceased friend, Michael. I am missing Pilates for this. <laughs> I just... <laughs> there, he there he is. is. Sorry about that, guys. My my Zoom needed an update. <laughs> That's no what worries. they all say. Bada boom, bada bada boom. I'm so I'm so pissed. I was on doing this on another computer. I had it staged with my Met stuff and oh. stuff. And now I'm in the living room, and you can see the nine million pictures on the wall. <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's no, no, not at all. So, yeah, um, I'm, sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, it's just great that you 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 made it. You know, um, what was I going to say about that? You, uh, we were just talking about uh, Queens. Was seeing. I uh, was saying. I, you know, I grew. I'm from Queens. Carmine, you're from Queens. Mm -hmm. And I saw. I, you know, uh, we know one of the composers of for the film is had worked with David Lynch. So I was I was yeah. telling Andy and Harry about this time the first time I went to see Blue Velvet I had to walk out because there's so much people were just talking it's driving me crazy you oh, know yeah. it's it's certain movies I, I can kind of look past it you know but that one I was just like I gotta go so I went I waited I went saw so Manhattan I had to see it again and of course it was almost like changed my whole. Person, you know, you know it's like I could I could expect people talking at like a uh, Fast and Furious film, but like yeah. a David Lynch <laughs> film, like, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't make any sense. Like you know, usually, yeah. it's a well, you know, crowd. I think it was just such a new the fact that a David Lynch film, not to get too far astray from our conversation about here after, currently on Amazon Prime. <laughs> oh, directed by Harry. Her, sorry, but uh, directed by Harry Greenberger and starring Andy Carl. Produced by Carmen Miglietti. But I, I think that the fact that a David Lynch film was never supposed to be in like a major movie theater or big, you know, typical playing against Hollywood films. Like, well, how does this guy who's really is an experimental filmmaker get his mm -hmm. films? So people would go into there thinking they're going to see something kind of mainstream. And then they just like, what am I looking at here? Are you getting this guy? He's finding an ear in the freaking thing. And what is this? Oh, you know, yeah, and, yeah. It, and it gets more and more dark and dark. And, and, and so I, I think it just freaked people out and they were uncomfortable. You know, so I, I, I however, growing up in the house, all I grew up in, I was very comfortable with dark. So. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. well, hey, already you done... you're, you're growing up watching John Waters films and all sorts of things <laughs> yeah, like that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's me too. That really flipped my brain when I was about 14. Oh, yeah. I was like... Yeah, I think flamingos.
Yeah, that'll do it. Precisely. If they're like, hey, just be grateful nobody's eating a turd, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Put that on the t-shirt, will you? Yeah. <laughs> I was on all the crew shirts for that shoot, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who's eating a uh, turd next? Well, uh, as I mentioned, and I don't know if anybody caught, I snuck in the film already a few minutes ago, but uh, so, so where did the film materialize from? Because... Uh, who wrote the screenplay for this? That would be me. That you're guilty? So yeah. you wrote and directed. Okay, very good. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I know the rest of the information. I just I just blanked on that, that you wrote oh, the screenplay too. No worries. Um, and where did, where, where did you get the idea? Uh, I, I had a, a, a breakup at an airport, kind of similar to in the movie. Uh, and... As I drove away from that, I kind of like just started thinking about how like uh, if I were, you know, if I were killed on the way home from this, I would have died single. I would have felt like, uh, you know, I hadn't uh, I hadn't sort of, you know, reached, you know, that sort of goal. And also I, I, I found myself thinking uh, I was immediately besieged with friends saying, well, you got to get out there. You got to meet someone. And I thought, well, that's you know, your, your head is all screwed up right after a breakup. And somehow that's right when everyone thinks you should meet someone and you're in no condition and you're not your best self. And you're, you're the last person anyone should be meeting at that point. And I just, you know, I, I came to an off ramp and kind of had like a close call, wasn't killed, but uh, thankfully, but I had a little close call and, and in my head at least thought, you know, oh, see if, if that had happened, I would have died in this state where, you know, and I just sort of started extrapolating from there, the idea that like, it puts a metaphorical gun to the character's head to be forced to meet someone while his head is still screwed up from a bad breakup. And he's still in kind of that, um, that uh, miasma of like misogyny that you get into right after, or, or, you know, if you're a, if you're a guy, at least people tend to like um, drift into that, like, well, I, I don't like the opposite sex anymore or whoever it is that you're used to dating you. You're like, I don't want relationships. I don't like them anymore. I don't, I don't want those people. I, you, know, you hate people and you hate relationships and that's a bad state to find someone in. And so that's what I tried to do. That's where, and, that, and that's where and, the original nut of it came from. And, and Andy, you're obviously you're Harry's avatar because Sure. Yeah. <laughs> only, for that, only for that part, really. The, the character's really not based. Puppet, on if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, the character's name is Harry Greenberger. So, yeah. <laughs> <if I'm> just... <laughs> no, it's it's Robert. Michael. Michael. Yeah. Michael. Uh, right. And by we're going to mention, by the way, Carmine, who is is a producer on the film. The producer on the film. You guys collaborated. You swapped roles this time, right? Harry, you produced Pounds, or was a producer on Pounds, which Carmine wrote. And, uh, and acted in, and uh, uh, which, and we're gonna, we're gonna, t uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about that later on. But, but Andy, you, you, uh, sorry to leave you out. Uh, you uh, end up playing this role. How did you uh, hear about the role, or did, did you use a proper casting director? And uh, there was a casting director, and uh, it, and and she and Harry had actually seen me in a Broadway show, uh, Groundhog Day. I was doing a musical at the time. Uh, the musical no, no. Of Grand Hogan. Another, uh, never heard of it. Um, I'm kidding, but it's funny that it's there is some element there you could probably, if I thought through, thought it through a little yeah. bit. I, I think that was like a metaphysical journey, right? Uh, well done. In a, another story, and it just sort of seemed fitting uh, for all of us. Uh, certainly, when they approached me about the project, and I read it, and I was like you know, please let me do this. This is yeah. uh, where my head's at right now. It's in this, this space of discovering, uh, you know, take a metaphysical journey to discovering oneself by, you know, sort of meeting all these obstacles along the way. Um, metaphysical obstacles mm -hmm. in, in both cases. Uh, Groundhog Day obviously repeat the same day over and over again until you find a certain uh, pattern in yourself and, and maybe eliminate all the bad things that are getting in the way of you living your life. And uh, with Harry, it was death. Just <laughs> die. Just, you don't get to relive the same day, die. So I had to, you know, Michael had to die in order to find uh, his, it, a way to find the, 
nitty gritty, the uh, Carmel Center, if you will, of uh, of what love <laughs> the, really the is. Nougat. The, the nougat, the nougat center. Yeah, nougat. Well, there's Carmel, a nougat. You can use your own sweetener; it doesn't really matter. Just find the center. Right. Um, find that chewy center. Yeah, uh, but there's what would you a do great for a Klondike bar. Actually, let's just talk about candy the whole entire. <laughs> so there. Uh, that, by the way. That's my other podcast, so we'll have to flip over to that. Uh, well, well, you know, then there's a great tradition of of of. Of, of movies that start with the uh, protagonist dying, right? Yeah. And then go into like a flashback or some sort of, in this case, it's not a flashback. It's, there is a little bit of flashback, but, but it's primarily what happens after he dies. Yeah, it was, it was an incredible journey. It's, uh, it was, you know, it was, it was weird because you're just, uh, okay, well, what do you do now? Obviously, I, I don't know how much to give away about the movie. Um, <laughs> Okay, so there's there's certain there's certain, there's certain obstacles in death, if you will, beyond just dying. It turns uh, out, it turns out that you're 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 sent on a journey of uh, of certain rules within uh, the uh, the context of the of the afterlife that are set by uh, Christina Ricci, if you will. <laughs> As it happens, that was a nice uh, <laughs> that was a nice little coup there, right? To grab her, she's she's delightful. Sure. Yeah, she's great. She's very good in this. Yeah. 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 I she's, agree. she's terrific. She was great on set. We, uh, uh, you know, one of the great artists to just like work with. She because she kind of gets everything and she can play around. She's she's goofy, but she's also like as you know, as, as you see on screen, uh, very dynamic. I mean, Andy, you essentially interact with three. I mean, directly interact with three, with again. Guys, jump Three in if I'm, or if I'm, if I'm, uh, you know, giving away too much at any point. No, no, you're, you're, you're trying to be mindful of of, of spoilers, but uh, you have. I mean, you're you're basically invisible to most everybody, right? So you have only a small number of the people. You have. Yeah, the the rules of death. <laughs> yeah. You're a ghost, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're in this limbo where you're 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 trying to find because you don't already have your uh, um, soulmate. soulmate soulmate. Thank you. It's just such a foreign concept to me. me so too. pardon me for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I just refer to them as my. No, I'm not going to say it because yeah. people actually are watching. So, uh, 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 but uh, you're, you're right. So you're you have a little bit of time to get find your soulmate before, you know, <clears throat> you're sort yeah. of fucked and and you're f f fucked as well. So <laughs> do you have, <laughs> and so the film is basically following you while you're you're trying to take care of that. And there are a few scattered people here and there who are also in your same situation where. They haven't found their soulmate, like your old friend, played by the great Michael Raspoli. Great actor. Uh, yeah, I mean, terrific to from, just from my perspective, so um, and I'm, I'm sure Harry and Carmine can fill in a lot more about, you know, what was happening during, during Michael's journey, um, is that, you know, in, in order to, to, you know, you, you have to find your soulmate. Um, some people find it in life. Uh, obviously, in this case, uh, you know, talking about Harry's, you know, original idea where he was uh, broke up with somebody in an airport. Um, that's that's what happens to Michael. Um, so that was definitely not his soulmate. And minutes later, he is in an a accident that, you know, sends him to the to see Christina Ricci. <laughs> and from there. Um, yeah, I think it's there. I was describing to comedy. talk about some of the rules. Some of the rules are comedic and, and a little like, you know, farcical, um, but they they're really about finding the, uh, you know, the, the purity of, of of what it is about someone you love. And uh, that's, you know, there's a lovely journey of meeting all, all these people who are dead as well. Um, and uh, you have to find someone there. It's, you know, maybe even harder to find somebody, a soulmate in the afterlife. Andy, you're a very physical yeah. actor. And yeah, and this, but this was a very kind of, you, you're able to exercise different set of muscles. You're right. You're, have you had a lot of opportunities to do comedy? Cause you're very good. You're, you really have a, uh, your, your physicality really lends itself to the movie. And uh, I'm not sure if you see what I mean, but, but you have a confidence 
and uh, you know, which works really well with the character. I mean, you, you know, it's the opening sequences, you know, especially before yeah, you do, a, before you fall, a... start falling, you becoming a sap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think the the opening, the very opening of the the movie we we shot, uh, I guess two weeks in. I'm going. This is. I'm going to give away the the set yeah, piece. Uh, I'm I'm on a you journey. Can see everyone is terrified of Harry. We're all being very. Yeah, yeah. What this I'm just going to give it away. I don't. I'm care very anti spoilers. This is very. <laughs> but this was an interesting like oh, setup. So obviously, I was how it looked on camera as I'm like being. Uh, I'm on a gurney and I'm I'm doing this long monologue, three pages that I memorized. By the way, very good. And did it in two two takes, I think. It was yeah. brutal. <laughs> um, so uh, we, uh, but I'm going backwards in a circle on a gurney. This is the physical thing I had to do backwards while somebody's putting blood blood on my face, <laughs> and I'm I'm doing this monologue straight into a camera, and uh, I'm spinning backwards and being touched in the face. Uh, all the distractions you could possibly want in one oh, shoot, yeah. and. Uh, <laughs> And it was, it was like, like, you know what? I just settled in, went to my, my, uh, my Zen place of, I love physical stuff and, uh, and let it fly. Um, by the way, uh, yeah, Harry, please, you know, don't feel in any way, uh, you know, held back with, if, if we go into territory, you would like to keep, or I can delete it. But uh, <laughs> if you, if you want to see something funny, go look on my, this YouTube channel uh, for Tom Noonan, his appearance on my show, you know, Tom Noonan. Sure. And, and uh, his, regarding spoilers, like he, you know, he, this film is being re-released on streaming for the first time and I'm setting it up and he, he says, what, he interests me, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just sort of setting it up so people haven't, don't. he goes, uh, I'm, I'm like, did I say too much? He goes, I just don't like knowing anything about any movie. Like I go, I don't even, like, I, don't, I don't like to know about any, yeah, I don't even like to know the title. <laughs> yeah. He goes, I don't even like to know the title. I'm like, well, I don't think you represent the majority of people that go to movies <laughs> because probably not. It's a funny, it's funny because they just left it in, you know. Oh, yeah. It's very awkward. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've made my life's mission to fight against spoilers. It's, <laughs> you know, like I'm the, uh, uh, but I. Well, well people should know that the main character to, got. Go ahead. Sorry, I don't Tom. want it to take up too much time. But Harry has the greatest all-time origin story of why he's like that with spoilers. Uh, it has to, I'll just say this. It has to do with The Empire Strikes Back. You all know the big spoiler in that one where, you know, Luke finds out, you know, Vader says, I'm your father. Don't basically, tell him. <laughs> basically, poor Harry buys the oh. Empire Strikes Back comic book before the film comes out. And then it's in the comic book and ruins it for Harry. Yeah, and that was scarring enough that then I wind up when when Jedi is coming out three years later, I'm on the school bus and I have arranged to go see an advanced screening the first day of Return of the Jedi. And I have avoided all spoilers. I've literally sat in movie theaters during the trailer going la 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 la. So I won't see any spoilers. And I'm on the school bus on the way to school where I'm being let out early to go to the movie uh, with friends because my friend's father is the principal. And so I get special dispensation. I get to go see Jedi. And um, on the bus on the way to the theater, they're playing the radio. And the morning the morning DJs start going, uh, so yeah, Return of the Jedi last night. It's amazing. Luke and Leia are brother and son. And I'm literally, I remember <laughs> running up the aisle of the school bus to try to so do something. Oh, right, right, right. You, know. you can't unring that bell, though. You can't yeah, unring that bell. Exactly. Yeah. They just start. But, yeah, see, Andy, I just spoiled it for Andy. He's leaving. Those movies, those, those movies aren't very good. Yeah, yeah. They weren't, they weren't central to my upbringing or anything. Small films. <laughs> one of, one of, I was going to say, you know, I was listening to Andy explain when he, we said that part about, you know, where, you, you know, the journey he goes on. You know, it's what you want to find about what you really do love about a person. Mm -hmm. But I think as the movie's also going on, Michael is is you know shedding all these things that maybe uh, gives that person the space to love who he really is too. Like they're happening at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, and that's something that Andy just pulled off incredibly. Like in the beginning, he's still thinking about a one man show and all these things that he felt meant something to him, but little by little, those things kind of 
you know, spill away. You know what I mean? And he, he has to open up his heart too, you mm -hmm. know, so it goes both ways, you know, so that's something that, you know, one of the things that I love that when you watch this movie, you just see that happening and, and Andy just, you know, just carries it through that whole film. You know, it's just these incremental changes that are happening to him little, ever so slightly, you know what I mean? But it's, it's all there. Carmine, what a softie you turned out. To be. <laughs> <laughs> if we would have been downstairs in the other room with all my Met yes, the, the harder version of me, you know, I'm up in the family room. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have, uh, we mentioned Christina Ritchie's in it. We mentioned Michael Rispoli, who plays uh, one of Michael's old, oldest friends in the world. He happens to be in this limbo situation too, but figure, he figured out a way to kind of, you know, make it work for, yeah. for uh, himself anyway. Yeah. 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 Nora um, Arnazader, how do you pronounce her name? Arnazader. Arnazader. Yeah. Terrific. She's lovely. She yeah. played, she, she, she's in the movie as Honeybee. We'll just say, becomes a central character in the journey. And uh, my and and uh, Andy, who plays your mother? Uh, Jeannie Berlin. Um, and she don't know her. her. Don't know her. Don't know her. Never heard of her. Never heard of her. Wow. Uh, you know, for me, it's like in in. Uh, so I had passed away in the movie. Uh, but, you know, and, yeah. and, and uh, but I was able to, I was able to witness as does say Scrooge in the uh, Christmas Carol. Um, <laughs> he's able to uh, walk in and on, on, you know, places that he's been and uh, finds his family uh, speaking, you know, about him. They can't see him, but um, Jeannie does this, this, there's this great moment. I remember on that scene is that um, she's actually like, really trying to you know feel michael she could feel him in the room she can and it really was like it still gives me chills now because i was pretty much face to face with her at that moment when she's talking about my character um being there and and you really get the sense of like a mother that has lost her child that's, cool. but, that's right you know it's really powerful uh, and she was so good at that point and i just remember staring at her and, and us connecting in that way um or you know obviously putting up many layers and that this movie has many layers in it that are like that. Um, she was just terrific. Um, yeah, everybody, everybody that's part of the family. That was, it was a sad moment, but a poignant moment in, uh, in for Michael to witness that, uh, things right. that he had lost, things that, uh, things that he should care about, things that he'll miss now that he's uh, like gone. Um, so it was, it was beautiful. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of my favorite scenes of the movie. I love that. I love that scene. Me too. I love it. I guess you could call this an existential comedy. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, how, guys, maybe. Carmine, how did you uh, get Jeannie Berlin, who is, of course, the you I, know famous from uh, you know uh, the, the the Heartbreak Kid and hundreds of roles, and but also the daughter of Elaine May. I mean, just remarkable. I got to give all credit to Harry. You know, Harry uh, told me that he wanted to get her. And, you know, he had a conversation with the casting director and they came up with a strategy to, you know, reach out to her. But Harry had been throwing her name around early on, you know, so I, I can't I can't take any credit for that. You know, that all really came from Harry. Yeah, well, he if he he uh, gives me a little too much credit. He also like, you know, uh, Carmine was in on every casting decision and was... Uh, you know, uh, I, I will say the one that I'm... Uh, I, it was Andy, you know, because, you know, the casting directors, they send you... They'll send you these breakdowns of their sort of initial thoughts and ideas. And I spotted Andy right away. I said, oh, Harry, I, I'm, I love Andy Carl. I, you know, like, I, I knew Andy's work and I was a big SVU fan and I loved his season arc on SVU. You know, so I, I was... I was chirping about Andy pretty early on. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the game. No, it's true. It is true. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for doing it. We were not we were not happy what happened to to, to Docs <laughs> in this house. You know, in oh, this oh, very yeah. room, we saw it happen. We were not happy about it. <laughs> you know, so no, and that's and 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 I know that network TV's tough. You know, you 
you know, you, you, you know, they're moving so fast and, 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 you know, it's, you know, that has its set of challenges as well, doing network TV and, you know, to create a character that you, you felt something for when he met his demise in that show, you know, like it, it stuck with us. Like we're like, Oh shit, man. I thought this guy, he was going to be a permanent, you know what I mean? Like it, like that's how it was. And it, it surprised you. So when we saw Randy, uh, you know, I was definitely, and then Harry went to go see Groundhog Day and, yeah, Carmine had recommended him from seeing him in Law and Order, and I hadn't seen any of that. But I, uh, 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 you know, he told me how much you know he was moved by his role in that. And then our casting director Lois Trapkin uh, took me to see Groundhog Day, and I went in thinking, well, I I don't know anything about this person, and I came out thinking, geez, I hope we can get him because he was brilliant in Groundhog Day. I wish there was a way everyone could see that. It's it was brilliant work on everyone's part, brilliant work on Andy's part. And I, I literally, at the end of it, I, w- I went from not knowing a thing about him to uh, being desperate to convince him to do it. And luckily, he was willing. I think, you know, just the, 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 you know, the, I guess the circumstances being that, you know, I was doing that sh- in particular show. And then, you know, your script came along. I was like, well, this is, uh, if I could do every project that has this sort of, you know, comedy meets metaphysical meets you know a uh, journey through through man i mean talk about a truly fulfilling project to work on and and hereafter just like was it was it was i was still you know i was in such a, a joyous mode at that point to be able to like you know let's make this insane journey happen and and make it mean something and make it you know as as much as we uh, want to touch people's hearts with uh, what what tr- what is truth truth about love and what's truth about ourselves within the context of something surreal and and uh, comedic and heartfelt and uh, great performances. So I you know a true treat. I had a good like couple of years where I was like, yeah, man, I'm riding. <laughs> and then I you know. Now and that, I, I just played a cop that gets killed again on on an episode of The Good Fight. So oh, yeah, geez. you know, it's like that's, that's part of my that's part of my journey as well. If, but I'm just saying, like, if anybody's watching us wants to cast somebody as a cop who gets killed, I'm here. <laughs> or or a guy who wants to take a metaphysical journey into a you know absurdist sort of play, I'm here to. Well, no, or you could do both because you know, clearly dying doesn't stop you from doing an entire movie. Apparently, yeah, that's what I could do. I could do the the journey of my character on SVU after he dies. He goes and he actually goes into uh, Harry Greenberger's world of, of death. I do have this script about a uh, a cop that dies. If you're interested in, <laughs> uh, who, who doesn't? Yeah, actually, Harry, uh, yeah. I'll send this your way afterwards. Uh, uh, the name, again, the name of the movie is called Hereafter. It's currently streaming on Amazon Prime and other platforms, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, um, I think it's on all the uh, all video on demand platforms on Apple yeah. TV and Amazon, uh, iTunes. But uh, Harry, you, I mean, excuse me, Andy, you you uh, you walk through uh, solid doors and walls and people. A uh, very good job. I, uh, no, the special effects are quite good. I mean, I, I imagine you had to use that budget carefully, is my guess. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Yeah, it was uh, that was territory that I had only had minimal experience with, and and I think Carmine had only minimal experience with. And then we were lucky enough; we had an amazing director of photography who had a lot of experience with the particular effects house we were using, and so he was able to double as our visual effects supervisor. And our editor also did a lot of amazing work on the effects, Sarah Corrigan. And uh, we're very lucky this company, Safe Frame in Romania, they worked with us and, you know, possibly at a loss uh, themselves by the end of it because they were, they believed in the project, which was thrilling. They, uh, they and, a lot, and a lot of that had to do with the cast. You know, they were excited about the cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know, they wanted to do this, you know, it was the cast and the movie itself. It's great. I imagine it's got to be sort of discombobulating for the actors like Andy to constantly have to try to, you know, imagine stuff that's not there. I know that's part of it, but it's, uh, you know, Andy always made it believable 
as did the other actors, always made it feel like, you know, when you see it on screen, they don't look like they're acting against a tennis ball on a stick. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and this so. was all shot, right? All shot, all done before COVID, I, I have to imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. You know yeah. what? This is the perfect opportunity to say it. Andy, we were almost, Harry and I were going to play a joke on you. We were almost going to call you in the middle of COVID and say, Andy, you know, this sounds crazy. But now that the streets are totally empty with thinking, <laughs> <laughs> what a missed opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just throw oh, it out there. Just to, you know, just, you might have, but the good news for everybody yes, is but it was all you might have a chance for a sequel this fall. Right. Year. So at this rate, you uh, yeah, may yeah. get very, very fortunate to be able to shoot again in the streets because they'll be they might be empty again. Uh, Delta cult, let's hope not. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, and, and Andy, had you had an opportunity? I mean, you're in just about every frame of this movie. Um, have you had that opportunity before to do to carry an entire film? Uh, no, 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 no. This was, uh, you know, um, uh, it, they, they put the word indie film in front of it for me. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll start off, man. I'll be, it was small and I'll be like, I'm heading a film. This thing was like, you know, it was a monolith. I was like, oh, wow, I better like, you know, bring my A game. So I, I tried um, to, and look, I, I just think, you know, at the end of the day, it still just comes down to frame by frame and scene by scene and putting the pieces together. And so, sure. you know, working with some great actors and, and watching how producers it can be pu puzzled together producers directors yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> did you what did you have where did you grow uh andy did you have uh did you well, how long have you been in new york uh, I, but i've lived in new york now for uh, where did, 25 I missed, years i spoke uh, i was originally from baltimore maryland oh. Uh, that was my John Waters thing that I threw at you earlier. Oh, I, right, I of up, course. Not Barry yeah. Levinson, but 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 John Waters. Okay. Yeah. Well, he he was he, he, was, he right. grew not up disturbing. two blocks away from where I grew up, so I feel like oh, it wow. off. Um, and Divine went to my high school, so all that kind of stuff. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, oh. Not when I was there, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't witness the good years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by that point, he was just staying outside on the out by the schoolyard. No, exactly. I didn't say such things. But Building hairspray. Um, uh, and I went to the uh, maybe th three or four seasons ago when I was at the Maryland Film Festival, which is in ba Baltimore, as Andy knows. Um, well, as you all know, uh, but I was I there was a screening of that um, HBO uh, De Niro movie where he plays. Uh, uh, Help me out now. I, I, I have Bernie a, Madoff. Bernie Madoff. Yeah. Thank you, Karma. When he plays Bernie Madoff and Michelle Pfeiffer, you know, played his wife. But anyway, that's directed by uh, Barry Levinson, who had Wizard did, of Lies. Who did? Thank you. Who did my show many years ago with an earlier film called The Bay? But but he was in the lobby, and then the next film I went into, John Waters was standing in line behind me. We ended up being seated together, like, or just ended up sitting next to each other so you know and i, I was very shocked i had already approached him once at lincoln center and said mr waters would you do my podcast please? Uh, <laughs> and he said get the fuck away from me <laughs> he didn't say that yeah. but he did say no oh well <laughs> i said now i really respect you please <laughs> but uh he doesn't do a lot of interviews does he he does appearances. now and also you know, just probably, but even for 50 years, you know, probably done so many anyway, even if he doesn't. So he's only going to do them when he needs to, you know, first of all. Right. Uh, but anyway, um, well, thank you guys. I mean, I don't know if we hit, do we hit on everything? Is there anything else? I just want to say one other thing, which is oh, by all means. originally uh, one of the reasons why Andy wound up being so perfect for it is originally like Groundhog Day, like the first half is kind of meant to be a dark satire of like how the world makes you feel when you're single or lonely. And, and then, you know, you're isolated. Uh, right. 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 Yeah. And then how like, uh, you know, it was meant to be sort of a dark satire of that meant to be sort of like uh, bringing in all the frustrations of that and playing with that. And I knew he could do that. And then when you see same within Groundhog Day, 
it takes a turn uh, and then it becomes, you know, at least in a way it attempts to be more meaningful and attempts to be more heartfelt and attempts to get to like a romantic and, and uh, you know, to a completely different place. And having seen Andy and Groundhog Day made me realize, well, there's nobody I've, I think I've ever seen that could more perfectly ride that line and keep the same character and keep the same level of and type of humor going through all of it, keep that as a through line and make it so it's not a um, a roller coaster of tones, and um, it was beautiful what Andy was able to do with it in that way. And uh, I can't thank Andy enough for doing the role. And we were, and we were, we did. We were, we. Uh, there were plenty of days, Adam, where Harry and I would look at each other like, "This fucking, we got such a fucking great cast. This great cast. Look at this cast we got." Yeah. You know, what I mean, because it doesn't. You know, it, a lot of things have to come together for that to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it is. It's uh, you know. The, the actor has to feel like they want to play that role and then the schedules have to work and, you know, you have to sort a lot of things out, you know, yeah. so it, it doesn't just, you know, happen by osmosis, you know, you, you, you have to catch some breaks in all oh, kinds yeah. of ways and, and as it unfolded and it all, no matter how much you prepare for it, it, it's sort of, no matter how much you can even think about it months in advance, it's like, it comes down to those last few weeks at just the nature of it. It just has to like come together within that like 30 days from when the movie's going to shoot, you know, and, uh, you know, so we were just really, really lucky because I, I and you can have a real strong cast. And then if there's just one person in that cast or one actor who's just not working out, it can, it can, it can really end up compromising the entire project. And, and, you know, you guys, I, I have to tell you. No, and Lois did a great job for us. You know, everybody, even those, those the, the day player roles, uh, you know, all that stuff, you know, that 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 stuff is all, all so important. And we just, it was a lot of fun. I, there have been plenty of days where I wish I could snap my fingers and, and go back to about 80% of the production. There's about 20% I never want to experience again. Yeah, <laughs> stuff, yeah. that, stuff that Harry and Andy should never have to see or anyone should have to see. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it all happens well, thanks no, to was a great, saying it was a yes. It was a freaking great experience. It really was. Very, very grateful and proud to have been a part of the movie. And it all happens because of Carmine saying yes in the first place. Because, like, as I always joke, he knew what he was getting into more than I did at that point when he said yes to doing this and my first film with me. Like, I, I was, I thought I knew how big an ordeal it could be to make a feature uh, and because I'd worked on so many in other roles besides director and, and writer. And I always think Carmine, he knew that he was saying yes to something that was going to be terrifying. And I was like, oh, no, it's going to be fine. We'll do great. And so it's Carmine saying yes that starts the whole ball rolling, that he was willing to come on board and 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 do both of these with me. So, so it all starts with him. Nah, he's being too nice, Harry. You know, Harry had told me about the script for a while. And it was, you know, I had known about a few of his scripts and this is the one that resonated with me the most, you know, there's the one that I wanted us to get the chance to do the most. And, you know, from day one, you know, I, I tell Harry this all the time, one of the best parts of working with Harry, not only you know, a close friend of mine, of course, but, you know, he knows what he wants. You know, one of the toughest things as a producer sometimes is dealing with a director who might just be indecisive. You know, what uh, I mean? it's it's secure. Not, that's not yeah. the case with Harry, you know what I mean? And that makes would make my life a lot easier, you know, and then we got lucky to find Christopher Walters, uh, you know, because we had another DP who who became unavailable close to the shoot. And then, you know, we had, had all the effects experience that we didn't have. Yeah, the right. Original DP, yeah. The original guy, you know, he was sort of going to be the special effects guy as well. And, you know job came up and the guy had to take it. It happens. That's part of doing independent films. And then another filmmaker I knew referred Chris and, you know, we just, you know, it just, you know, just got yeah. lucky. That dude. Oh my God. Some of the, the pictures, some of, some of the, the, the camera work on this movie is so beautiful. It's so, it captures New York in that great way. And uh, the way you dream of, uh, I just have one last thing to say is that, Harry and Carmine are complete assholes. You can tell <laughs> by this interview. Right? They're Thank hiding you. everything. They're Thank actually you. really evil. They're Thank totally you. evil. Uh, that was the spoiler so I, I was knew, looking for. I knew he was keeping it to himself. I just wanted to say it now. I just wanted to get it out. So I'm done. Fuck these two guys. Yeah.
Uh, it was a great team. It was a great, great movie to work on. Uh, obviously, as you can tell, we could all sit here and like, you know, just have a love fest for it's know, nice. Hour. I was pretty much expecting Christina Ricci to zoom bomb us, but <laughs> uh, let me tell you, she's, she's cool enough that she would have. Yeah, she, yeah. she's awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and but funny no, as well. Happy to have the three, of you, the three of you guys on. And thank you, Carmine, for uh, thinking of me also and just letting me see the movie. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really nice that we can uh, come together again. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for doing this. And uh, looking forward to talking to you again uh, soon and seeing those guys. There you go. (laughs) Just photo bomb. There she is. There she is. guys. I I love you. You're all dead. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Jesus. Jesus.